we just talked about vector forces. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, when would I ever use a vector force in dealing with the heart? Actually, it gives you a really good clinical picture. So, to get a good clinical picture, um, you might have seen on TV shows or actually in the real world where they hook up leads to a patient. And so, let's draw that in. So, I've got my person. Um, I do apologize, I'm not the best artist, but for our sake, here's our person. Anatomically correct, okay. And we've got a heart. Patient's heart is kind of facing in, down towards their left hip, or in this situation, down towards um, their, I don't even know what, left block. Um, okay, so their left foot. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be acting just like doctors and nurses, and we're going to be hooking up the EKG leads. First lead is going to be your grounding lead. Got left side, got right side of the body patients on their back looking up at you. First lead is going to be your right leg lead, and that's going to be your ground. So let's ground them out. Second lead is going to be your right arm lead, Then you've got a left arm lead and the left leg lead. So great, now what? Well, if you connect all the leads except the ground, you get a triangle. Okay, great. Now we're on to something. So we got Eithoven's triangle. Eithoven's triangle. That actually gives us a good picture. So now let's go back to vector forces before we get into the kind of the, the, the basics of Eithoven's triangle. Like I said, vectors have direction and amplitude. We're going to assign, so here's, here's a circle. We're going to give this direction arbitrarily zero point on the circle. We know that there's 360 degrees in a circle and we're going to count from this direction. So as we go down we get positive, so we're maybe 45 here, here we're at 90 degrees, keep going, okay we're at 180 degrees. Um, and, and just because cardiologists do that, um, this is now going to be 90, negative 90 degrees and conversely, this would be like negative 45, negative, what's that, 1, 135. Um, so 180 is going to be our highest. Otherwise, if we go this way around from 0, we're going to get in the negatives up to negative 180. Um, if we go this way, we're going to get that positive 180. Um, same thing. There's still 100, 360 degrees in that circle. So, so I drew in an arrow here. Um, here's our vector force. You know, we can determine the direction of this, so I'm just going to transpose it down. It's in zero plane. So this would be a zero degree vector force for the direction of it. Let's draw a direction of that. We're going to transpose it down into our circle, so there's it transposed, same, same uh, vector force. That's going to be 90 plus 45 is going to be 135. That's going to be about the 135 degree vector force. Okay. That's going to be important to remember. I know it's incredibly basic, the way I drew it here, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going from the negative to the positive direction, and that will give us our vector direction. All right. So we attached our three leads. What do those three leads actually mean? Well, okay, so let's start on our right arm. Right arm is going to be negative, negative, and I'll explain what this means in a bit. Left arm is going to be positive, negative. Left leg wins, positive, positive. I already mentioned before that we're going to measure from negative to positive. So for this first lead, your EKG machine is going to do all the work for you, actually, and it's going to have a negative and a positive, arbitrarily assigned a negative and a positive. I said we go from negative to positive. It's going to measure things in that direction, from the right arm to the left arm. And we're going to assume that the patient is laying flat, so this is going to be a zero degree angle. Because remember we drew the, I'll draw the same axis up here, just without that circle that I drew. When we have a vector that goes from this direction to that direction, negative to positive, negative to positive, 
I'm just going to transpose that vector force over here. And it's on that axis. Remember I said we arbitrarily assigned that zero degree angle. This is going to be lead one. Lead one. I'll number it. So lead one is going to be a zero degree lead. And it's going to measure, see how we kind of went through the heart there? It's going to measure the heart from that angle, from the zero degree angle. And by and we'll get to the other leads. And that kind of measures the heart from different angles. So the whole point of attaching this EKG leads is it gives us different pictures of the heart. It allows us to look at the heart with different vector forces. The heart's vector force is always going to be the same, and at least in at least the same patient. So in this patient, Sheila, we'll call her, um, Sheila has her heart, her vector force, the kind of accumulation of all of those like muscles contracting, it's going to give us a vector force and a directionality down towards the left hip. Let's say we had another patient, Bob, who has left ventricle hypertrophy. I said earlier, the left ventricle hypertrophy, so there's the left ventricle, there's the right ventricle, there's some atria up there, but this is going to be the left. There's the left ventricle. If that's hypertrophied, it's going to cause more of a vector force towards that left side, so the overall direction of the heart is no longer towards its normal place. It's now going to kind of aim up towards the left. And if we super transpose that onto our uh, kind of arbitrary axis here, taking that left ventricle hypertrophied, so that left ventricle is working really hard against the blood pressure, it's going to kind of get more muscle, that more muscle is going to cause the direction of the heart to shift, it's going to shift up there, remember this was negative 90, this is positive 90, I'd say that's about a negative 20 degree axis, so the axis of that heart is negative 20. All right. But let's, let's continue on with just a normal looking heart, because that's going to be the easiest way to learn. Okay, there's our different chambers of the heart. Lead one, like I said, is going to be measuring in that direction. So if the heart is normally kind of down towards the left hip a little, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing in the vector forces from lead one and the normal heart and comparing them to create our EKG tracing. So lead one. Lead one, like I said, is that direction. That direction. From negative to positive, that direction. It's going to be flat, it's going to be zero degrees arbitrarily. Normal heart, we'll just say, is at a 45 degree angle. I'll draw the normal looking heart there, and I'll leave it there for a while. Normal heart, going, going at least kind of in the same direction as our lead one. I'm just going to draw in some perpendicular lines here. Incredibly straight, I know. Okay, so we've got our lead one going to the right. We've got our normal heart going off kind of the same direction. It's not going 90 degrees there, or it's not even going the opposite direction as lead one. It's going this roughly the same direction as lead one. What that's going to do is when you have vector forces that go together, think of them as adding together, and when they add together, they're going to create a positive deflection, and the more same direction that they go, so let's say this normal heart force, the normal heart force down towards the left hip, let's say it shifted more to the left, like I kind of explained earlier, now it's, it's more like that. Well, when they're more together, they cause a higher deflection. And that's an important key concept to remember, is when they go the same direction, they go positive deflection. And when they go pretty much the same angle, or even the same angle, they have really high deflection. So for lead one in this case, and the normal heart, lead one and the normal heart, normal heart, they go pretty much the same direction, so we'll cause a deflection kind of like that. Now, let's take a look at what would happen if we looked at a different lead. So lead one is from the, le uh, the right arm to the left arm. Let's take a look at the second lead. That's going to be formed from the right arm to the left leg. So right arm is always negative. Negative 
left leg is always positive positive. If you know that, you can kind of figure out the rest. Um, but then the left arm is going to be positive negative. Always go from negative to a positive through the miracle of physics and the EKG machine. We don't have to worry about that, but we do know that it'll be measuring from a picture in that direction. So it's going to cause a vector force in that direction. I'm going to draw it on here. There's our vector force that lead two caused. It's going to be a positive 60 degree force. And that's just using um, our zero degree arbitrary point that we designated. Zero degrees, get out a protractor. I'm really good at visualizing, so I don't need a protractor. That's going to be 60 degrees. Um, okay, so now let's take a look. Lead two. Lead two um, is. I might as well draw that on there. So get some clarity. Lead 2 is going to be 60 degrees. Let's take a look at our normal looking heart. That's going to be... Okay, well look at this. It's kind of coming together. Remember when I said that when the arrows go in the same direction, they're going to have a higher deflection? Okay. Here, they're going in the same direction but not as much, so they have a smaller positive deflection. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now let's take a look at lead 3. Lead 3 is going to be formed by the left arm and the left leg. Negative to positive. Left leg is always positive, positive. So everything's going to want to go towards that left leg. Well, we didn't just make that up on random. It's because the heart kind of goes towards the left leg as well. I mean, you can have it so this is negative and positive, but don't, don't even worry about that because the heart's going down in that direction. We want to see what it's, what it's like going in the same direction. So lead three. Kind of going, I know this, this uh, drawing isn't the best, but I'm going to super transpose that. We've got an arrow that's kind of going like this. I'll actually make it a little better. We're going to do that. You got an angle of 120. Positive 120 because we're measuring from this direction. Or we could call that positive 120, negative 90, negative 180, negative 250, negative 260. Oh, I can't even do math, negative 240. But since we're measuring from this direction, it's going to be positive 120. All right, after confusing everybody that's listening, let's move on. So let's take a look at lead three. Lead three, lead three. So I'm going to draw in our angle of 120. That's our lead three angle of positive 120 from right there. Positive 120, positive 120, positive 120. Next, we're going to be looking at our normal heart angle, which is, oh, probably 45. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how the normal heart angle matches up with lead 3's vector force. So we've kind of taken a look at three different pictures of the heart. We've taken a look from this vector force, from that vector force, and now that vector force. Well, okay. So a perpendicular line to 120 is what we're going to draw. You might say, why did we do a perpendicular line? Well, we want to see if that normal heart angle is still facing the same direction as our as our picture. And our picture is going to be lead 3, and our lead 3 is going to be at an angle like that. So we know that this is 120 degrees. From that arbitrary 0, this is going to be about 45 degrees. We draw a perpendicular line in because we want to see if this normal heart angle is facing the same direction as our picture. And we can see that it's on the same side because we know that Perpendicular would be 30 degrees and whatever, 90 degrees, so 210. Okay. Well, we know that 45 is between 30 and 120. So our normal heart angle is facing at least kind of in the same direction as our vector force, our third lead vector force. So, like I said, when they face in the same direction, that you get a positive deflection. Okay, well... Here, same direction, positive deflection, same direction, positive deflection. When you're really close together, when these 
vector forces are in pretty much the same direction, you're going to get a big one. Well, here, they're really not in the same direction. I mean, they're in the same direction, but just not as much so as lead 2. So you're going to get a smaller deflection. Okay. That's pretty confusing, but let's move on.